All right, so today we will go over chapter seven. Uh, for the past few weeks, we discussed, you know, the PCB IDC, and we say we have five layers. So we say physical, So we have physical layer and network uh, physical and data link layer. Then we discussed I did not really do anything when I went this thing on. Okay. And all right, so uh, today we'll go over network layer. We discussed network layer last last few last weeks. We talk about that. The network layer and how the network layer works. Today, we'll talk about the protocol, the, the IP protocol which works on the network layer. So now, to manage the traffic or sending the, the traffic or the datagram or the packet or the message from source to destination, okay, you need a protocol to manage that, to control it, you know, and for the post source and destination to understand the data, so they have to follow the same protocol. So that's why the IP protocol work on at the third layer, which is the network layer. And when we talk about protocol, it's a standard. Like you know, when we when we uh, talk or when I agree with something, we have to follow. That. For example, as you mentioned before, if I want to talk, so you have to listen to me. All right. If I talk and you talk in the same time. What's going to happen? We will not understand each other, right? So that's what that's a, that's that's the protocol. We have to, you know, manage and organize this communication. We have to follow the standard. So that's the protocol. So today, let the network player need a protocol to manage the the network here or the the, the the traffic or the data. How you move it between source and destination. So what will we cover in this chapter? Uh, we will explain the general ID of the IV protocol and where is this ID uh, IV protocol in the network layer and the, the layers, which layer is it going to reside on. Then we will cover, okay, how's the IV, uh, IV, uh, IV version 4 look like? Remember that. In each layer, we add a header to the data. So when the data is coming from the application, so what do we have to do? We have to add a header to it and send it to the lower, the transport layer. So when the transport layer receives the data, it will, it's going to be two parts, correct? It's going to be the, the, the data, the original data, and the header from the application. Now, the whole thing, it's going to be a new data for transport layer. Now, transport layer, what we'll do, we'll add another header, right? 
then send that to the network layer. Network layer will do the same thing. They will add a header and send it to the network, uh, the data application, I'm sorry, the, the what they call it, uh, data link layer, correct? So in each layer, we add a header and this header has a lot of information. This header is gonna tell me, and it's gonna tell, tell the destination how to translate these information we're trying to sell, correct? So that's the whole idea. I'm adding a, a header to each datagram, and this header has a lot of information. So we have to see what is the header look like, all right? Then we will go about fragmentation and reassembly. Remember that when you try to send a big message from the application, okay, you cannot send it in one piece. It's gonna be a lot, all right? So what you have to do, you have to divide it to a smaller, the smaller things, right? Now, in the network layer, this data we call it datagram. Each piece we call it datagram. Now, this datagram, maybe we cannot send it one piece. Why? Because depend on the protocol in the data link layer. If, for example, if you are using the Ethernet, Ethernet can send only 1500 bit, uh, bit pair per second or byte per second. Uh, you know, per packet. So we can send only 1500 made uh, by per uh, second or packet, correct? Right? But if you are using different algorithm, for example, FDPR, you can send maybe more than 1500. So what does that mean? The data at the network player, you know, it's a big piece. Based on my data link player, then maybe I have to divide that to a smaller piece, and we call that fragmentation. Fragment at the source, at the destination, what we have to do? Reassemble that. We have to put that back there. Right? I will we'll show you that. So that's another important topic. Then we will we'll see some of this uh, uh, option. We'll discuss that. Uh, then we'll see the checksum. What's what is the purpose of the checksum? You know, to make sure there is no any error in the header. When you build the header and you send it out at the destination, you want to make sure nothing changed to the header. If the header changed, the seen the data is not accurate. What the actual data is the header has to be correct. And that's why we are using something called checksum. I will show you how we do that. This one I will skip. You can go it by. Uh, you can go over it. It's the same concept, but that's for point to point. You know, wide area network. I'm not gonna cover that. Then we will uh, uh, show you know some example there. So let's go over it. So now the IB protocol, as we mentioned before. As we mentioned before, we have five layers, correct? So IP protocol works of the network layer. So here is the IP protocol works. There is more protocols in the network layer. And next week we will cover the ARB. Today we'll cover IP protocol. All right. So it works of this layer. So in the exam, when I ask you in which layer IP protocol works, it's gonna be layer three network layer, okay? All right, so it's very important. IP protocol is and reliable and connection less data ground protocol. What does that mean? That means IP protocol, they will do their best to deliver that your best box is not going to be. What does mean is not going to be? Maybe when you send the packet to the network layer, maybe the packet will get to that. Maybe it will be worse. Maybe it will be received out of there. So the IB will not manage that, will not tell you either, okay, if the packet is correct. It's not going to tell you if you have an explanation. It's not going to tell you if the, it's out of sequence. So that's why IB alone is not, you know, reliable protocol. That's why 
if you if you need a connection or communication, you need sure the communication is perfect. That's when you have to use another protocol with the IB protocol to control. That's why we use the TCB protocol. TCB, TCB protocol works on the transport line. So that is cannot manage the track. Make sure you know packet is delivered. There is no any uh, loss packet. There is no any corruption. There is no any uh, out of order packet. Okay. So that's why we cannot just rely on the IP protocol. Some of the scenario, you don't care, you know, if you lose some packets. You, if some of the pack, packet is uh, changed, look at that. Give an example. When you watch a video, when you watch a video, so sometimes you will see there is a distortion or like, you know, some pixel. It's changing. It's not like a clear message. Okay. Is that a big deal when you watch a movie? No. no, you can't handle it. So that's why when they transfer a movie or you watch a, a TV through the, the, the internet, they will, they will not use the PC protocol. They will use something called the UDB protocol, which the UDB protocol, they don't care about if you lose something or there is something corrupted based on the scenario. Some some data no. Sometimes you have to send, you have to make sure nothing changed, nothing lost. For example, you know, if you are sending, for example, a you know uh, a sensitive data, like you know, patient information, you know, social security information, all this information, you cannot change your social from one to two. So that's why you cannot just use the need to for the cover ID. You have to use the PC. You have to make sure the data is correct, nothing production ever, nothing lost. So that's why, based on the scenario, maybe the IP protocol is enough. You don't care if you lose some packets, some of them missing, corrupted, that's fine. All right. That's why we need another like another protocol with the IP protocol to make sure your connection is correct. You have a strong, uh, reliable connection. That's why, that's why they, they call the piece of the, the, the suite, what they call it, PCB IP protocol. Because that's really the main two protocols that are called, PCB and IP. That's how the network protocol is really strong. So as we mentioned, you know, PCB. And simple example in our life, when we try to send, you know, a letter through the post office, if you send the regular letter, if you just you know type the letter, put in an envelope, put the stamp, and you send it. The post office, what they will do? They will do their best to deliver. So for any reason, maybe the post office will drop it to the street. I don't know what's happening with the system, right? All right. Uh, so let's say you know the, the post office is trying to deliver your message. All right. And for some reason, or your letter, the post office officer, he dropped it to, while he changing or switching or trying to move, he dropped it to the street. Do you think the post office, they would care much? No. However, if you have a very important, important letter, what do you have to do? You, Julie, what do you have to do? You have to use the registered mail. You have to go to the mail, the uh, the mail office, and yeah. stamp, take a certification, and they have to deliver it because the other destination they have to sign, right? And they will send you the notification. The other the, the destination received it and they sign it. So that's why you know, uh, relying on the IB itself protocol. Is not guaranteed. That's why maybe you need the PCB protocol with them. Right? So there is an issue with the system. So you have to keep turning off and off. So, all right. So now the data in the in the IB protocol, the data, what we call it, data gap. You have to remember the network layer, IB, IB protocol, the small piece you're trying to send is called data gap. And this this datagram, okay, you have to add the header. 
to it. This header has to be minimum 25, maximum 60. So minimum 20, maximum 65. can see. So as we mentioned before, it's called datagram. That's an example. What is the length? So a header is a 20 to 60, minimum 20, maximum 60. And we will see that one. So and they divide it to four byte section. I will see exactly what we mean by that. So all right. So here's the example. So that's this is the data coming from where? Can you tell me this data coming from where? From the transport layer, correct? Maybe I should use, because we have a student at the other end. All right, so this data coming from transport layer, correct? Now we have to add the header to it. What is the size of the header? 20 to 60, correct? Okay, what is the maximum total size here, the whole thing? That's the maximum. I will show you right now, all right? So that's the, the total thing. That's a max, include the header, all right? Why? We'll see now why. All right, so how's the header look like? That's the header, all right? So the header is minimum. 20. Can you tell me? So, and we remember we, we say divided, each section divided to four bytes. So what is the size here? 32, correct? From zero to 31 is 32. How you divide it by eight, how many sections you will have? Four, correct? So that's mean that's one section. And that's a second section and third and four. All right. So when we say I have minimum of 20, how many, how many, how many sections I will have? 20 divided by four. That's mean I will have five sections. One, two, three, four, five. Five sections. All right. And how many, how many uh, extra we can? So we say 20 minimum. So how many extra we can add? Four, 40. Okay, the 40, if you want to divide it to sections and each section has four, how many sections you will have? 10, correct? So you will have here 10 sections extra. So it's going to be another lines, perfect? So we will talk about the option later. But now let's talk about the header here, what we have. So. The header is divided to, you know, some attribute, some information. So the first one, the first, first four bits, it's called version, right? The version of the ID protocol. How many ID protocol we have so far? Two ID protocol four and six. So that's me. You know, in this four bits, either you have to find zero zero, I'm sorry, zero zero and zero one zero zero or zero one one zero. If you receive a packet has zero 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 one. So what that's meant to be, what do you want to understand? So that means there's something wrong. But if we don't have a protocol, it's called zero zero one. We don't have a very one. So either four or six. So you can tell that's why the checksum it's gonna figure out if something happened to the to the your packet. So your packet when you send it, either it has to have six or four. So that's why the first four packets all the protocol uh, the version of the uh, the ID protocol. From page number four to seven, four bits to choose for the length of the header. So it's gonna tell me how much this the header size. So what is the minimum? One, right? So if in this I divided two four section. So what is the minimum value you have to have in the header? 
when you divide by four sum. So if you have a value there three, what you will have? It's a corrupted factor. Because you know we're supposed to have minimum number of right? So next service side, it's eight bits. So this one is used for I will show you now, but this one is service side to give you more information. From bit 16 to 31, it's giving you the, the total length of the 16 bit, the total length of the your data graph. So from where and from where from where I got this number. This number I get from two to power sixteen. So that's why here it's gonna tell you. Now, question for you: How I can find how much data I have? Not header and data. How you will be able to find that? If I tell you there is a data graph and here is the size, can you find out what actual data? Yes. It's going to be the total length minus the header size. Then you will know how much data left, right? So because that's the going to be in the exam. So I will I will give you number and I'll tell you how much the data now. Then the second thing is called identification. This identification, it's it's a combination between uh, the ID address I will tell you now, with because you know again when you send a data gram has to be a unique identification. You cannot have two data grams with the same identification because now you cannot tell this one is for who. So that's why you need a unique, a unique identification. Flag will show you, fragmentation offset will show you, time to live. This time to live, it's, it's used to tell you how, how many hops your data can switch. Remember when you send it from source to destination, it has to go through browser. So, here, you can restrict. What I can tell, I can tell this packet only allowed to jump five hops. If this one jump another hop and you see now the, the time to live, it's zero. What the, 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 the computer receiver or the hop receiver, what's going to do? We will just spread this spread. Why? Because it's not supposed to go anywhere else. That's it. So that is very important. Protocol, why we need this one? Because remember, ID providing service to different protocols. So we have TCP protocol, UDP protocol. So you have to tell the ID protocol, it has to know, oh, I'm doing a service for what type of other protocols. I will show you an example. Then the checksum, I will show you. The checksum, why we need the checksum? To make sure you know the header does not change. Okay. Then we will have source and destination. Because when you send a packet or datagram from compute from source to destination, I have to know it's coming from A to B. Okay. So that's why this two we need. Then you will have another 40, those options, and we will see it's for that. So let's go very quick. So we talk about the virgin, we have two, four and six. Header length, for example. As we mentioned, 20 minimum, that means you will have five section. Each section is divided to four, five. So that's why we will have. Now, 60, that means you will have 15 sections. Perfect? Okay, service side, you know, it's simply, it's give you some, uh, you can make your data graph, which one is important first, you're given higher priority. So this one, you don't have to, you know, uh, spend a lot of time on it. But again, how many bits we said? Eight. And again, the first two, if you see the first two, it's unused. Then you will have the six. And those, simply, if the first three is zero, 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 okay, so it's doing specific thing. If it's not zero, zero, so that's mean if it's the first zero, that's mean here, if you see it, it's coming from the internet. If this one, 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 that's mean it's a local. So you're trying to send the packet from local network. Okay. If it's zero, one, 
Okay, that's it's a temporary or experimental. All right. So it's it's giving the destination more information. You know, what is this packet for? Perfect. All right. We as we discussed, total length 16 bit. So we know the total length will be 2 to the power 16. Correct? So that's the header plus data. So what is the length of data? It's going to be the total length minus the header length. That's in the exam for sure. So keep that in your mind. And as we mentioned, this number is coming from 2 to the power 6. All right? Minus 1. Because usually we start, again, we start from 0. All right? So as we mentioned, identification, it's used for fragmentation. We'll discuss it later. Flag, those we will discuss in different so, uh, time to live. It's a limited lifetime. It's traveling through the internet. So how many hops this data plan can travel? When it's reached zero and it's still, I did not reach to the destination, it's gonna be dropped, All right? Because I cannot keep sending the packet going forever, you know, it doesn't make sense. So you will have enough time to reach a destination. If for any reason did not reach the destination, that's mean there is something wrong, okay? And I cannot just keep the network busy. Drop it, try again. As we mentioned, protocol is telling. Yeah, I have to wait a little bit until, I, I don't know what I will have to do really. Oh, there is issue, correct? Yeah. How much I can do, really? So, takes time to turn off, turn on again, so. So one of the field is a protocol. So the destination has to know this datagram coming from which protocol. It's TCB, ARDL. I'll show you the diagram. Uh, let's give it a few seconds. That's coming. I'm sorry, guys, it's not on my hand. So that's just gonna slow us down a little bit. But hopefully. Is any one of you works at the help desk here? No? One of you? Usually they hire a student to do a help desk. Right? I will call them and ask them to fix it. All right, so. Come in, okay. So protocol, we'll show you now, and the checksum, we'll talk about that. So. So remember, that's the IB protocol. So the data is coming from where? It has to come from another protocol. So either the data is coming from TCB. So I have to mention that's a TC coming, the data has a TCB information or it's coming from UDB. That's from the higher layer. Sometimes the IB protocol provides service for the same layer protocols. So for example, and we'll discuss that tomorrow, something called ARB. Okay, or the ISMB or IGMB or OSMT, the open source, open source path, I forget the total. So, and this value, each protocol has a value, symbol. If this data coming from TC, TCB, for example, so what is the value? So what you will have, what you will write here, I'm sorry. If it's TCB, so the value here, which will be six, simple. That's mean the destination will know, oh, that's a TCB protocol. All right. Now, let's do some examples very quick. I received a packet like this. That's the first eight bits. That's the header, correct? So the first, remember the first four bits, it's for what? The IB protocol version. So what is this one? Zero, one, zero, zero. 0, 1, 0, 0. it's version number four, correct? Is that correct? Is that correct? 
correct, correct? We have a protocol. So that's mean that's fine. Okay, what about zero zero one zero? That's what? So two. What is the size of the header? Remember, we divide it to four section. So that's mean what is the size of the header? Two multiply four equal. Is that correct? What is the minimum? 20. So now I received it. So what I have to do with this packet? Garbage. Something happened. It's a corrupted. Something happened. It has to be minimum 20. So in the exam, I will give you a question. I will give you eight tips. So you know, is this one a, a correct packet or datagram? And you should look. Oh, okay, it's very four. Correct. So we have four or six, that's fine. Anything else that's mean bad. Then I will go to the header size. If it's a 20, between a 20 and 60, good. Less, not good. Another question. I received the header length is eight, correct? That's eight in binary. So what is the, the total size? Eight multiply four. What's this equal? Perfect. All right. So is that a correct header? Yes. Because minimum is? 20. So I have more. Now, how much data you will have here? Can you tell how much data there? You cannot. So here. So we know there is a 32 byte. So the first 20 byte is for the header. The next type is options. Remember the header. So the header, the first is the, minim the, the minimum 20. The remaining is the option. Now, can you tell me what is the, si the, the whole size? You cannot, we, we don't have still any information. So we need more information to tell. So now the other question here, so if the header, the header length is five. So what what this mean five? Five multiply four equal 20. The header is a 20, perfect. Then the total length is 28 hexadecimal. So what's, let's do the eight. I'm not sure if you know how to convert from hexadecimal to decimal. So how you transfer 28 base 16 to decimal? It's simply you do eight multiply sixteen power of zero, then two multiply sixteen of one. This one equal eight plus thirty-two. How much the total? So how much the total length for the whole thing? Forty. So the total length equal forty. How much the header, header length? 20. What's how much the data size? 40 minus 20 equal 20. So that's in the exam. You know, you know how, how we did that? All right. So next question. I received this packet in hexadecimal. And that's the what we received in the header. That's the beginning. So not the whole thing, you know. Then what I will ask you, how many hops can this packet travel? So what I have to look for, I have to look for, I have to look for this one. So how, how many hexadecimal I have to jump? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, let me see how they do it. Yeah, so you have to here. Excuse me. So you have to because we have to skip hexadecimal. So, so we have to skip eight bytes or sixteen hexadecimal. All right. So if you count, okay, you will see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. That's what I'm looking for. So how many hops I can jump? One hop. All right, so zero one, one half. The other question for you, that's why it's zero one. All right, so the next 
the next two 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 bits here, what does mean? It's the protocol number. So so now if I go to the table, zero two here, what is the protocol? So that's why the header has a lot of information. It's a big header. Why? Because I have to tell the destination what is this packet coming from and how big, from where, what type of IP protocol I'm using. So we have to have all this information or the destination will not understand what I'm doing. That's why we need a language between us, all right? So that's the whole idea of the format, all right? Next topic, as we say, datagram, it's a size, correct? It has a specific size. Sometimes we have to divide it to a small pieces. That's why we call the fragment. Why? As we mentioned at the beginning. Because depending on the data link layer and the protocol we are using there. So if I'm using the Ethernet, that means I can send 1500. But if I'm using something called FVVD, Maybe I can use send here. So that's why, based on the, my data link layer, I have to divide my data graph to a smaller piece. We call the fragment. Then we divide the fragment. Let's say, we have a, let's, say, let's say when I have a big one, I divide it to three fragments. What do I have to do? I divide it to three, build the first one, put header and send it. Take the second one, put another header, send it. Third one, put another header, so, correct? So, you, then at the destination, I will receive it three, put them together, and now I have one datagram. So, that's why even when you do fragment, there is a few things you have to keep your eye open. How you will know that's going to be the loss of fragment. How you will know if my packet is divided to one or two or three. How you will know, you know, if I receive the fragments in the right sequence. So you need more information. That's why we have more attributes. If you remember here, if you remember here, you have the flags three bits and you will have the offset. Those, it's gonna help you for a fragmentation. And that's how that's gonna help you. First of all, how you will decide what is the size of the fragment I can do? So that's why there is a tribute called maximum transfer unit. This one is a, a function of the data link layer. So the first thing, the IP protocol, we will go look at the data link layer. We will find what is the MTU. Based on that, I will know how I will be able to divide my data graph. What is the size I can divide it to? So this one is very important. Each protocol in the net a data link layer for like an Ethernet, the wireless, FFD, all this different technology, each one has MTU, maximum transfer unit. So that's why the IP protocol, before I do anything, I have to go see what is my data link layer, what I'm using. I'm using wireless or I'm using Ethernet. So that's the first thing. That's the first step. So each data link layer protocol has its own frame format and most protocol. As we said, Ethernet has a different rate. The wireless has a different rate. So each protocol has a different rate. So I have to go there. One of the fields defined the format is the maximum size of data field, simple. So that's the MTU, each one. When datagram is encapsulated in a frame, the total size of datagram must be must be the total with the header, must be less than the MTU because the data link layer cannot send it. If it's bigger than that, it cannot send it. Simple. I wish I can try move this one for you guys to see you, but you are far. If you if you come closer, maybe I can just turn this one and I show you. Unless if you have your laptop and you have the slides in the front of you. Okay. Huh? 
yeah, it's almost the same. The the most important thing, really, the pictures. You know, I don't. It's gonna be hard to see. Yeah. So I will try. Because uh, to turn it up, to turn it down, take a few minutes. Every classroom I teach, always I have a challenge. Always. Okay. All right. So the IB the IB datagram, what it has to do? Has to go to that's the data link layer, correct? Okay, that's the data link layer. So before, if you have yeah, if you have a laptop, that's a good thing, you know, make it easier for me. So before I build my, my datagram, I have to go look, see what is the M MTU symbol. Then when I have the MTU number, then I will go and divide my datagram to small fragment. What is the size of the fragment should be? The fragment plus the header should be less than the MTU. Symbol. Okay, so the 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 value of MTU is different from protocol, correct? I mentioned that multiple times. So we have Ethernet, we have FDI. Uh, FDDI, we have a uh, token hub. So each one has a different entity. So that's why I have to know what I'm using, what I'm using that data, uh, data link layer. All right. So the value of the, ether, for example, the value of the Ethernet is 1500. We, we talk about, we remember we would stand out uh, the 1500? There is a map for that, chapter, chapter two or three. So F, FDD. They use four four thousand three hundred fifty two bytes. BBB they use two hundred ninety six bytes. All right, so that's the protocol. What is the max maximum length of the IB datagram equal? Sixty five thousand. And from where we got sixty five thousand bytes? Okay, good. So, <laughs> so from where we got this number? Um, can you remind me? Correct. When the datagram is fragmented, each fragment has its own header. Correct. Why it has why why when you have when I have a datagram and I divide it, for example, to two to three data, uh, fragments, why each one has a different header? Why is not the same header? Why is it? Correct. Why? Because maybe, for example, let's say you know, I'll show you an example. Let's say you know, I have a datagram size of four thousand, and you know you you can only send fourteen hundred. So when you divide the fourteen hundred, so you will have fourteen hundred, fourteen hundred. Okay, that's twenty. So how much? Is it? Twelve hundred. So that's meaning the header of the last one is going to look different to the size of the data. Less, so you will not have the same header. We change a little bit, but the majority of the header is going to be the same. But it's going to be different little bit. That's why you would have a different uh, header. All right. So one of the attribute or the field in the header, the identification, and the size sixteen. Why we need that? We have to make sure each fragment has a different identification. You cannot have two fragments has the same number. So that means the same. That's wrong. So that's why it has to be different. That's why it has to be unique. How do you make it unique? It would be unique when you combine the identification and the source of the But right? when you combine them, then it will be unique. Flag. So the flag is very important. So one of the attributes has a three-bit flag. So the three-bit flags 
Okay, the first one is unused. The second one is called D. When you see D, if D equal one, what does that mean? Don't write. You have to send this the whole thing. So that means this datagram it should be less than MTU. If it's bigger than MTU and you say don't fragment, then how do I send it? I cannot send it, all right? So that's why it has to be less. So this usually for, usually we use that for like, you know, uh, the control signal, all right? So it's a small, there is no data, just a small signal. Then you cannot fragment, you have to send it in one piece. The last one is M. When you, if it's equal one, what does that mean? I'm not the loss of fat, simple. So there, that means there is more of fat, all right? And we'll show you some examples here. It's, it's, uh, or more question in the exam. So now let's do an example. Let's say now, as we said, I have data, I'm trying to send 4,000, all right? And I'm using the ethernet. Ethernet, let's say, you know, it's allowing you to send 1,400. So that's me. I cannot send 4,000 watt myself. So my MTU, it's 1,400, correct? Right? So that's me. In, okay, that's my data. And my MTU, it's 1,400. Can I send the 4,000 one shot? No. So what I have to do? So I have to divide it to fragments. So in the fragment, how you want to divide that? You divide it to, you're trying to send it from the 1400 from zero to 13999. Perfect. So that's one, the first one. The second one, we will send it from 1400 to, and the last one, the remaining. So the remaining how much? Is is that 1,400? No, it's a 1,200. All right. And if you remember the other attributed of the offset, how you find the offset? The offset is the beginning of your fragment. So for example, the first one, how you find the offset for the first fragment? Just you divide the first set with divided by eight. So zero divided by eight, zero. What about the second one? 1,400 divided by eight is 1,700. 2,800 divided uh, by eight is 750. So that's the offset. The offset, the mean, mean the beginning of your, where is that your fragment start? All right? So that's very important. So, for example, now, let's say, you know, that's my original data. What is the size of my original data? 4,000 plus 20 for the header. Okay, so that's why. Okay, what is the zero, zero, zero mean? Offset. Right? So initially, if you practice everything, in one piece, so the offset will be zero. But we need the beginning of my family right here. And I'm sending everything. But since I'm, 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 I'm sending that through the ether, that means I can't send the 4,000. What do I have to do? I have to divide it. I have to divide it to three. So what here? What's the information? First of all, what is the size? And we need 20 for the header. What is the offset? Because that's the first one, zero, zero, zero. What is? What is this one? Can you tell me what this one? More, more fragment. Is that it? Uh, is that the last fragment? No, that means there is more fragment. What is the second one? What is the size? And what is the offset? We calculated the offset, correct? Right? And there is more fragment. What is the last one? So it's it's only 1220. And that's my offset. And why is zero? There is no more. That's a lot of fragment. There is no more. Now, question for you. You know, let's say you know this one is going through just the Ethernet. It's going to a router. Okay. And it's using the Ethernet the whole time. But this one is going to using different technology, the wireless. 
And this wire is this wireless, it's on the MTU takes only 800. So what that's mean? So that's mean I have to divide it again. So what's gonna happen here? Because remember when you send when you send your fragment through the network, so not all of them is gonna go to the same route. So maybe one is gonna go to this router, one is gonna go to this route. So when the router receives it, will open it, then we'll resend it again. What the router will do? We'll look all oh, what is my my next uh, uh, different player. And you will see, oh, now I'm not, this router is not using uh, ether, you're using something else. Now, this new protocol, the other protocol, it's allowing to send only 800. So, what the router will do? The router will expand it again. Based on which route you are taking. So, here, this router noticed I cannot send 1400. I can send all the 800. So what that's mean? That's mean I have to divide divide mine to two. All right. So simply what's happened here. So because I'm only allowed 800. So that's what 800. So that's mean I need 800 plus 20. Then is there is more fragment and the offset and here the second one from the 14 1400 minus 800 equals 600 plus 2 20 equal 16 point that's why the size and it's more a fragment because there is one still here and that's the offset all right so and maybe maybe the set next software maybe still has to divide based on that what you put it for so simple. That's why we need a fragment. That's why fragment is very important in the network. All right. So let's do some example very quick before we lose the screen. So packet arrived with m equals zero. Is this the first fragment or the last fragment or middle fragment? Do we know if the packet was fragmented? So when it's zero, what does that mean? That's that's the last fragment, correct? There is no more coming. But can you tell if your packet fragment? Maybe the packet it was a small. There is no fragment at all. It's a small piece, and you send it everything. So what you can tell from here, all right? So you can only only you know there is no more fragments. All right, the fragment is the last one, correct? Makes sense. However, we cannot say the original uh, packet was a very fragmented or not. You cannot tell. Maybe it was a small, even they did not even divide it to fragments. So that's why you cannot tell if it's a fragmented or not a fragmented. Simple. Voila. So now another another one. You received a, uh, a, a, a packet has one. What that mean? Is this one first, middle, last? It's not going to be the last. Correct. If it's a lot, that means we have zero. It's middle, maybe. First, maybe. Okay. Can you tell if it's a fragmented? Yes. Yes, because you know if it's fragmented, this means it has to have one. So what we learn from here, so that means that at least there is one more coming. So that's not the last one. There is more coming. Okay. And it could be the first or it could be the middle, but not the last, because there is one coming. And we need okay, but not the law la the last. We do not know if this first or middle. We know that why we can tell if we have more information. I will show you how. All right. So if I receive a packet has flag, the fragment of flag one, but that's me, there is still more. That means that's not the last one. There is not more. And it's maybe the first or middle. And to know if it's the first or middle, what we have to know? The offset. If the offset is zero, 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 what does that mean? It's the first or middle, right? So that's why we need more information. If the offset is not zero, 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 it's gonna be the middle, but not middle. Last has to be zero, the flag has to be zero. 
All right. So that's the, the, the question. So let me let me read the question for you. Packet has received with M value equal one and the fragmentation offset value of zero. Is this the first fragment, the last fragment, or the middle fragment? Okay, the answer. We just we say the answer. Because the M equal one, that's mean either first or middle, not the last for sure. Then because the offset equals zero, that's mean is the first one. Clear? Now let me give you another question. I have a packet. Okay, I have a packet arrived and the offset equal 100. All right, so the beginning of your packet is 800. Perfect. What is the number of the first byte? What is the number of the first five? The number of the offset. How many of the offset? We divide it by find the five, not the offset. What do I have to do? Five. Multiply it by it. So if my offset is at the 800, so what is the number and what, what is the five number? It's 800. So we multiply by it. So here, so what is my offset? So you remember, so that's my data. Okay, that's the first the first fragment, the, set, the fragment I received at the offset 100. That's the offset, correct? 100, correct? So, but remember, when we do the offset, we divide it by eight. So what is that? The data type uh, or the, the 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 bytes number it's gonna be one hundred multiply eight. So now, do you know the number of the last byte? Do you know the size? Do you know the size from this information? You, now I know the bigger. So now to know the size, what's your Total length. And you know the total length, and you know from where you start, and you can subtract. I will show you now the example. So here's the example. Okay, so now I have a val the offset is 100. The value of the header length is 5. Okay. And the value of the total length is 100. <coughs> what is the number of the first byte and the last byte? Right? So let's think about it. So first of all, the first byte number is, the offset is 100, and we know it's 8, eight, eight byte. So we know it's 800. What is the total length? It's 100 bytes. So again, so let me draw that. So I have, that's the whole datagram. I, I divide it to per fragments, perfect. So at this point, that's my offset, it's 100. So that's me and the byte, the number is 800, perfect. And this one, the total length is 100. So this here, it's 100 byte, perfect. And what is the, the, the 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 header length we say five so that's mean the first 20 is is for the header so how much left here right so what is the 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 last number byte is 879 because remember the header is not, in, uh, is not included in the offset. 
So we added extra the header. So there's 20 extra. So how much total we'll have? 80, the data. So that's meaning that the, the, it's from zero to uh, 79. But because we start from 800, it's going to be from 800, it's going to be until 879. Right? So another another question in the exam. Option. So the option, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I will go over very quick. So what's the time? Yeah. So now when the remaining, remember the remaining 40, so the header would say from between 20 to 40. The first is 20 minimum. So those you have to have. The remaining 40, it's option. It's used for, for different purposes. Usually, mostly it's for troubleshoot. I will show you an example. So, come on. So how you divide it? So same thing you will have, remember we will have another 11 section. So how you divide it? You divide it to type of the option, the length and random value based on what type of function you have or option, all right? So the first one, the first bet, either zero or one. When it's zero, that's mean, it's only, it's only, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's only added to the first option. So it's not copy. Okay, the first fragment. So only the first fragment has this option. You can't copy it to the other. If it's one, that means this option, it's copied to all of that fragment. If you have one or two or three or 10, all of them, we will have the same flag. Second, two bits. So it's you have only two options, either zero, zero, it's mean datagram control, or one, zero is debugging and management. So you have only these two options. This one is reserved, this one is reserved. Remember, when you have two bits, you will have zero, one, one, uh, I'm sorry, zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. You'll have only four options. So this one we use, this one we use. This two we cannot use, this one we can use. Simple. Okay, the last five bits is the actual function. So that's the operation we have. That's what we have. If it's all zeros, that's mean end of operation. Zero, zero, one is no operation. So each one has a meaning. And I will show you some of them. Some of them is not, so not make sense for you. But some of them it will be easier to understand because we use, like for me, uh, Zero zero zero. The end operation. I never use it for myself. It's it's used for something, but I never. But for example, uh, record route. That's a trace line. It's very important function in the network. If you want to find what is your uh, network route from where and where from where to where your data flow. This, for example, if you want to go to the Google.com, from which router to which router go. From one to one to one. So you will see the actual route. That's very important. So we'll go over some of the example. So the option is divided to two categories, single file and multiple file. So that's why we say one we say minimum 20, then you will have the remaining. When we talk sing, single file, what does that mean? You will use only the first one, the first option. You will not use the other. So that means what is the size of your header will be? 20 plus 4, 24. So if you the others, you don't need it. Right? You will have a multiple file, and we will see if you can do need all of the other section. You need it. So the first one, the single byte is no operation or end operation. The other one, record route, spread source route, loose source route, times. Those another debugging utility and I will show you how so that's you know the first example for the first time no operation so it's not doing anything it's just no operation it's a simple signal but I will show you something make more sense so this one is okay that's record route option Remember when we have we have a trace out. So when we're trying to go from UB from here, try to go there. So here is what's it gonna go? It's gonna when you send the command, initially the remaining, 
you will have no information. Then this one is going to visit route and report. I'm going from Ruby, I'm going to this route. I will list the IP address of this route. When from this route, I was going to jump to the next route. Then I will list the second one. So how many how many hops I can list? I can list nine. Because the first one is used for the operation to tell me what is the operation I'm doing. All right. So for example, I'm sorry. For example, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to go from this IP address to this IP address. So I, I want to see which route I'm visiting. So what you have to do. So initially, there is no any data. Then I went, I visit this router. I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, this router. See this router? So that's why I'm listing the first router. Then I'm going, I'm visiting this router. What's the IP address of this one? This router. Then I'm going to this router. What is the address of this router? This is router. Then I'm done. So then I will receive, and I will show you now, we can do it in real life. So I will, then I will receive this information. So now I can tell if I'm sending something from this computer to another computer, I can tell which router I visit. And it's gonna give you more information, like you know, the delay. If you have a drop packet, you will know, oh, maybe the stack, there is an issue with the stack, if there is a drop, if there is a delay. So you will have more information. So another example, this another operation, what do they call it? Strict secure route. It's almost the same, but it's giving you more information. I never used it really, but maybe the network engineer, they use it. So here, if you look for each one, the source is this one. The destination is this one. Correct? Yeah, this one. So, again, I never use it, but here's the thing. So, what you're trying to go, you can tell you're going to list this one and then this one and this one. So, that's the first source and destination. Then in this router, it's going again because I'm looking always the source, the same source, but the destination is different. So again, you don't have to understand, but that's an option. So that's why they give you enough option to troubleshoot your network. The other one, which I like, I will show you now. Hopefully we did not, we will not lose. <laughs> Time is 10, this is very important. Oh. So, time is 10. So, for example, I'm trying to send data from computer A to something. I'm going to router one. Let's say I'm going to put five hours. Router one, two, three, four, five. I want to time it. I want to see how long it takes. It takes from my computer to the first router. And then how, how long it takes from router one to router two, and the router two to router three, how much to do that, how much to take time. So I know this is a time step. Because then when I go and review, and I see, okay, from my computer, the first router it takes me this application. Then for some reason, from router five, four to router five, it takes eight seconds. So you will know there's a problem. There's a problem between the router three and five, right? three and four. Now we can go and we can see the blood pressure. So it's gonna be an indication that we have an issue something that we need to go. So usually when you look, when you talk about this thing, first of all, you, you, you try to look if there is a deal. Second thing is you, 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 you can see if you if some of the packets drop for a reason. So sometimes you say, how do you do that when you do a thing? You send four packets, all right? Then if all of them you see. But he knows there's a problem. There's no problem. If one only received, so that means something happened. Why 
why is my effect is still strong? Why I'm moving the effect? That's it now. Why I have to go into the city? If it's three to see you, okay, there is one from it's okay, but then it's going back. So that that this improvement is gonna help you to cover the other So that's one of the one of the one of these functions, you know, the time side. Well, we're almost there. So give me maybe another 10 minutes and we'll finish the chapter. This chapter is easy. Can you see it? Yeah, almost. So time is time. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to the first router. So I will, I will list out the address. Then in the second part, I will put how much the demand for the how long how much the time. Is. Second one, second idea, second router is the address. And what is the time? third one? What is the time? So then, based on this information, you will know if there is an issue. Yes. So, and again, there is there is a different way. So, you can, for example, when you do time stamp, you know, you can just list only the time. You don't care about ID. Or you can change the flag. You put in one, then you list the ID address, the time, ID address, the time. The, time. the last option is you enforcing the table to what the access to time. So it's literally only it says I'm not I just want to pick all of it. I'm gonna check out for one, three, five, for example. So that's why I have to write which router I'm taking it, and I'm just making the road time. So I don't have especially if we have, for example, why we have to limit that? Sometimes it's only you have 20 options. If you're not able to lift why. Okay, you know the option. How many? How many? How many fields in the object? You would have only ten, right? You only have ten fields, right? So I cannot put the clock. That's why it's in at all. My network is big. So I cannot time some all of it. But let me okay. Let me let me eliminate some of this problem. Let me just now let me check out the one by ten. Oh, there is no issue. Time is good. Okay, let me now let me try. Okay, let me try from 12 to 16 to 13. Uh, because we cannot do all of it. So you can use the, the flag number three, all right, which is me. I can identify which route I'm trying to do a sign So that's why you try to set the uh, your your top of two. So you're trying to win it. So if you have a big one, if you look for the right time sign between one and the two, and it'll be a big delay, still there is a lot of top of two. But if you check between one and ten, and there is no issue. Okay, now let me look from 10 to 15. Now I know it's oh there is an issue between 10 and 15, and there is a big one. Okay, now let me go back, let me check from 10 to 15. No issue. Okay, now that means it's between the game. So you are trying to do a little bit of a lot of that, but you always, especially in a troubleshooting, you're putting troubleshooting in the war. Okay, you will not find the issue right now. So you try to eliminate all of that. Right? For example, I used to do a lot of computer work. If you have an input issue on the computer, right? Okay, what, what's the first thing you will do? Yes, it is not a computer, right? but for me, what I would do, I would check the one. Let me try my connections. Oh, I'm going to work in front. I mean, my router, my Wi Fi was working. I think now the issue in my lap. So now let me open, let me look down my lap. Let me go set it. Let me see what it is. Let me go to okay, the second. Let me go to the driver. Oh, maybe it's a cold there. Let me update it. So you try to cut as much you can, then you will. You will have a small area to look. That's the same thing. That's the troubleshooting ring. Anywhere. So, again, that's a simple example. 
I'm trying to do a timestamp. Initially, it's you know it's empty. Then I'm going to router forty. Then it takes uh, thirty six hundred milliseconds. Then I'm going to the router two. Takes another there's oh that's a timestamp. I'm sorry. So from zero to twelve, it's only twelve seconds or milliseconds. So then from here, from twelve to twenty, that's when there is eight. So from this router to this router, it's only twelve. All right, twelve, and from this one to this one, eight. So twelve and eight. Okay, twelve is a lot for me. Okay, let me pull that. If you see there is a big gap, okay, let me pull some different. So it's that's that's really the troubleshooting. Simple. All right. Uh, some of the field, if you remember, some of the field we say copy or not. So when remember the first one is like the, the list walls, it's gonna tell you if this it's gonna be copy for the all option or all fragments, or it's not gonna be copy. If it's zero, that means not will not be copy. If it's one, it will be copy. So that's why if you go zero, 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 the current zero, let me do it here. The, we are looking the first. Right. If it's zero, that's mean not copy. Zero, no. Zero, no. One, copy. One, copy. And zero, not copy. Now, the type. So again, you know, I'm not going to really ask you what is the type because it's hard to remember. Unless if I give you a table. If I give you a table, then I will ask you what is this type. It's a timestamp. And, and again, that's if you go here, for example, timestamp, you see here, for example, or maybe this one, this one, what? No, that's the other. Uh, okay. That's a timestamp option. So it's going to be 01000100. For example, just, I'm not going to ask you, I'm not going to. For me, I, I hate to ask something you have to memorize. There is no need to memorize anything. Just uh, try to understand what we are looking for. We did that. All right. Uh, again, some of the utility, let me do just exercise. I'm sure guys you used that before. Now let's examine, let's, you know, let's, let me, let's assume I'm trying to Bing. I want to see Google is live or, uh, or the website is down, for example. So one of the, one of the command, one of the command. So how we do that? You go to CMD. So I want to go to Google.com and see if the website is up and running. So what you have to do, you will use something called Bing, google.com, for example. So what's happened here, when when you Bing it, can you tell me what's happened? I send, I send a packet and I receive a reply, correct? So that's mean the website is up and running. Which information you can tell from here? How much? What is the size of the packet you send? Thirty-two. I sent four. Usually, you send. You, you cannot send only one packet. You have to send multiple packets to make sure, you know, you don't have any drops. So here you send four. The problem I cannot write here. Can I write? No, I cannot write. So if you see here, I have to use this one. You see here the, these information. First of all, you see reply, reply, reply. So I get a reply back. What is the time took for, for the, the data to go and back the information? 12 milliseconds. Okay, time to lead, it's 119, all right? So how many packets I sent? Four. How, how many uh, I received? What is the loss? So I have a, an excellent connection, all right? So what else I can see? All right, what is the minimum? Remember, we, I, I, I send it four times, and you can tell you have 12, 11. What is the minimum? 11. What is the maximum? 12. What's the average? 12 or 11. 11. All right. So these are good information. So if you're trying to bang, 
if you're trying to bend a website or a computer. And this one is 100 milliseconds. So you will not have the problem. When you see here, send four and receive only two. You can see we have we have fifty percent of the packages dropped for a reason. So that's why that's some of the IP protocol function or option you can use to troubleshoot your network. So that's one of the examples. So the other example, the record the routes. For example, let me try to remember. I forgot the command, but let me try to find it. So again, that's that's Unix command. Uh, but let me trace route. Let me. Or try another one. Yeah, trace route. Let me see how. What is the command look like? Uh, okay. Trace RT, correct? So for the same thing, I want to do a trace rt google.com all right <laughs> now if you see my command <coughs> it's visiting wrong or my wrong so i'm going to the first software and that's how i do it yeah so i'm trying to go to google.com so the first the first thing we we'll have to figure something for the uh, for the uh, yes the name name sir 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 okay now everything works by ID address but to make it easier for name we translate ID address for name so Google Google the form it's has the name of the ID so what is the ID address almost done wow okay. So DNS, so I want to go to Google.com. So when you type Google.com, there's nothing for Google. So what you can do when you hit enter, you send a reference to a server called DNS. So you go to the DNS and you ask in DNS, what is the IP address of Google? So DNS will send you to reply. So you know, the address of the VN and the Google function is telling that you know, whatever. Then your browser will redirect the traffic to this side. Okay. So that's why to make it easier because it's hard for us to remember all the ideas. You cannot remember what is the ID address for. Yeah, what is the form? What is the Google? So CN and what all this, right? Cannot remember. That's why we need the VNs. Almost done. So what's the time? Oh, we finished everything. Because I want to show you the route and that's it. <laughs> so the, the trace route, what I will do, I will pick up this route and see how much we delay. I will see if there is a, a drop, there is a delay, if there is a disconnect. All right, so I want to go to Google.com. First, I have to find the IP address. From where I got this IP address? From DNS, right? Then from my computer, you see, it's confusing, you know what I mean? Let's make it easier. So I'm going from my computer first to the first one. That's the IP address. I don't know where it's at. But I have to go through this one. So my computer, I have to go here. So what is the delay? Let's let's one minutes. So which is good? Okay. From this router, I have to go to this one. What is the address? Or what is the delay? This one. From this router, I have to go to this one. 
from this offer, I have to go to this. And we see, like, for me, the first the first three it seems to be fair within the UV. Okay, and then this one is the next term. You see this one? It's going to something other. It's going to another router below the other. I don't know what CP other. This one. You know, from here it's going to another. From here, then you can tell. You know, there is some delay here. Now it's that dash. Not bad. So. Okay, for 10 milliseconds, it's not bad. But if you see here, there is like, you know, uh, 50 milliseconds. Uh, there's a question. Sometimes, okay, sometimes you will see a disconnect. Then you will know this software is down. I cannot use this one. I have to use it. So that's one of the options we are using inside the ID here before to help us to troubleshoot it. All right, so that's Unix. So trace route, that's in Unix. So the, uh, what I show you, Windows. All right, so that's a trace route. You can do add more. You can add more function. It's going to give you more information. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, I did not do the checks on. Sorry, guys. That's a very important topic. All right, so why we need, why we need the checks on? Check the header if there is any corruption. All right. How you do that? It's from the name sum. So we add all this header together. Yes. So how we do that? So simply, we'll go to the example. Make it easier for you, so we don't have to waste time. So that's my header. Correct. That's my header. Initially, what is the checksum? Remember there is a field here called checksum? When I, I'm trying to send my packet, it's gonna be zero, all right? So how you how you do that? So you just put, put the, the uh, your, your field in uh, 16 bits. So if you see here, that's 16 bit, all right? So that's four and five. If you see here, that's four and that's five. Zero, it's eight bits. So that's why everything zero is here. Then you will have a 28. The 28 is this one. That's 28, correct? Okay, one, that's one. Then zero, zero, this two, zero, zero. So that's why you will see zero, zero, zero. Okay, four and 17. That's four and that's 17. That's zero for the checksum initially. Then the IB address. So you remember the IB address is divided to two. So 10 and 12. Then you have 14 and five. Then 12 and six. Then seven and nine. All right. So you put them in, in the top of each other. Okay. 16 bit. Then what you will do? You will add them. So when you add them, that's the result. All right. Then the, what is the checksum will be? Complement. Just complement. The one zero zero one, and that's one zero zero one. Then what you have to do? You write this number inside the checksum. Then what you have to do? You send it out. Now at the destination, you have to. Calculate the checksum again. And if the checksum equals zero, that's mean there is no error. Nothing changed. If it's not zero, that's mean there is error. So how we do that at the destination? So, okay, you will same thing. You will put them the same sequence. And here you will add the checksum they receive, all right? Then you will add them. So if it's all of them ones and you do complement and the result zero, that means you will know we are good. If it's not zero, that means we have an issue. So that's that's the important of the checksum. Keep that in your mind. The checksum only only for the header. 
if anything happened to the data, you would not check someone will not help you. That's why you need another protocol, the TCB, for example. The TCB will make sure nothing changed completely. All right. So the checksum, it's only make sure there is no error in the header. All right, so this one I will skip. The last piece, again, it's here for information. That's how they really do the code. Oh, before that, so yeah, that's the security. Again, there is a lot of, when you send a packet through the network, there is a lot of security uh, issues. Some people, they can listen, grab the packet, open it and read it. Or what they can do, they can take the packet, change it, and put it back and send it to you. All right. There's a lot of issues. So that's why usually they use another protocol. This We call it IPsec or security to make sure when you send the packet through the internet protocol, it's secure. Nobody can steal it. Nobody can listen to it. All right. Again, that's coding. Usually you, you can code the IP protocol by yourself. So I'm not going to ask you to do that. But try to go over it, see how the code, you know, how they encapsulate, how we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, write the code for the checksum. You know, it's just, you know, it's a programming. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to do that, but that's really the code, you know, how to do that, how you do, how you, how you do fragmentation, you know. Uh, how you find the MTU? Let's say, you know, MTU is 100, 1400, and your data is 4000. So it's gonna, you can write a program to divide it to fragments. So I'm not gonna ask you that, but you know, that's really a simple part. Is there any question? So, what, what, what we cover today? IB protocol. Again. The most important thing to go over about the header, go over each attribute, like you know, the version, the header length, the total length, the protocol type, uh, checksum, how you calculate the checksum. Those is gonna come in the exam, you know. Uh, mostly for this chapter in the exam, I will give you part of the header. I will ask you a question. Is this one version four, version four, version six? Is this one as a correct header? Remember, the header length should be minimum 20. All right, if it's less than 20, something happened, it's wrong, so reject it. I will ask you, uh, 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 what do you call it? How many hops this, you know, this packet can travel, so you have to find time to live. How many hops I can jump? Uh, if uh, is this one the last fragment, first fragment, middle fragment? What is the size of the data? Those are the question is the same idea in the slides, but it's going to be different. Number. It's not going to be the same. Number. Okay. Again, just to repeat, the exam I will make I will make it on Sunday. So six to nine, you will have hour and 20 minutes to do that, okay? Somebody sent me a question about the final exam. When is the final exam? Uh, we, we have to just go to the calendar, to the UB calendar, and see when is the final exam week. It's gonna be there. So uh, usually I do it in the same time, it's not before, it's not. So it's gonna be the last week of this semester. It's gonna be Monday, the last week. It's too early, but I think some people, they're trying to make a trip, a plan, if they want to travel back. Uh, it's going to be the last week. So go to the calendar, UB calendar, go to the website, and it's going to tell you when is the final exam week, right? It's going to be the last week. Uh, guys over Zoom, do you have any question before we end? Today, we finish early. Is there any question about the exam? Please, for the exam, make sure your laptop ready. You have your ID. So don't waste your time troubleshoot. I know some students, they have a challenge, okay? But that's why make sure your laptop is good. You have a good internet. It's very important to have a good internet. You know, uh, I can't bring you here, but 
some I know some people they live in New Jersey, they live far. I just want to bring you here, really. It's up to you. Uh, all right. So thank you guys for coming today.